Okay, Ben, thanks so much for taking a little time out to chat. Um, so tell me about the live show. What do you guys have planned? We're doing the same thing as uh, the last leg of the tour, where we don't have an opening act, so it's an evening with us, which allows us the freedom and the relaxation to just go through our whole catalog. And each night is a completely different set. And I'm sure that we'll throw some different songs in than we did from the last tour. You know, we'll probably add more rather than subtract, you know. So that's pretty much it. Now, I think we might have uh, changed up some visuals, too. I'm not sure if we're getting to do that on this leg of the tour. We have, like, a, you know, like the projection and photos and light show that goes with it. So I think some of that's been added on. Like some of the songs have uh, set images or whatever that go with them. We only had a few, and now we've had more time. And Josh Graham, the guy that did our uh, artwork for the album and for Telefantasm and Live on I-5 and stuff, he's been working yeah. with Kiri, our uh, lighting director, and they've been putting together some cool stuff. And um, for the uh, – you'll also be doing some songs from the new album, I presume. That's yeah, that's predominantly what we are doing. Okay. And then we go back through the back catalog or whatever, too. You know, the two-hour set or two-and-a-half-hour set that we do gives us the room, the freedom, the breathing room to do all that. And how are the new songs uh, touring? How, how are they working on the road? They were starting to get really cooking cool, I thought. You know, we're starting to really learn them and really own them now. They fit, like, with all the other songs really well. And uh, when you went back in the studio, was it, how did it seem? Was it strange to be, you know, making the whole album after all these years? Or did it seem like you just had not and no. you're back, right back? The same old, it's the same old, you know, chemistry. So not old, like, in, oh, that's tired or whatever. No, there's still a creative zap that goes on. It's the same as it ever was. And, a, and an excitement to it, you know. Uh-huh. So. And when you, so what is the creative process like for, for you guys? Do you do a lot in the studio? Is a lot done ahead of time? How, how does it work when yeah, you're trying to come yeah, up with we, the song? We, yeah, yeah. We do pre-production where we get together and jam and work out ideas and we, some of us will bring songs in and we work on those. So we do that for a while and then we, you know, whenever we book the studio time, whenever we think we're ready, we go in and then completely malform everything that we learned. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, then we work on tones and textures and structures, maybe. Usually in pre-production, we'll pretty much structure everything out how we want, you know. We'll go crazy on arrangements, you know, for a while right. on that. And then it was just a matter of time, like when we had time to do it, you know, like when Matt was available for basic tracks, when, you know, just scheduling of the studio itself, like, you know, other bands would have to come in. You know, we just worked at our own pace, which was really cool because we didn't have a record label when we did it. We just did it for right. doing it, you know, so we didn't have any right. deadlines or anything. We had a bunch of pesky, impatient fans going, no way, they're not really doing that, or I wish they'd hurry up, you know, and all that stuff, but that's right. not it. Flattering, you, know? <laughs> you know, at least someone cares, you know. Are you concerned about... Do you want people to buy the music, or how do you feel about that kind of stuff? Well, I'll, first and foremost, I'm concerned about Soundgarden and how we put our best foot forward. So all that other stuff is just peripheral nonsense that doesn't really affect anything. What the digital age really affects when you're in the studio, if you're together at all, like a band or mentally or balanced out level. What One really weird thing that's missing now, because no one uses tape anymore, you know, except for, like, drums and bass or whatever, is you don't hear, like, when you're doing a take, you don't have the time period of rewinding the tape thing that happens there that doesn't happen anymore. Cause you sit there and wait. I always do this anyway. I sit there and wait for the tape to do that, and the, and the producer or Adam or whoever he's working with goes, oh, okay, God, I was waiting, you know. You don't have that weird breathing time. You have to actually just yeah. naturally have that happen for yourself and not rely on the machine to do that, you know? So you uh, so you become more in tune with self-focus. 
So that's the that's the main thing about recording is it's just about focusing. Like when you're being videoed or you know someone's taking a picture of you, it's totally different than when you're just getting your picture taken or being videoed. You know, when you see that red light, when you're being recorded, you 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 know you yeah. breathe different, you, you tense different, you your neurons fire a little different. So the main thing right. is to get your focus down so that you're actually performing the part rather than doing this track that we can fix and put, you know, don't eat, you know, and try to get away from that unnatural feeling. Actually, the whole process of recording and anything and all the downloads and all the stuff that happens after the fact of a band making a song, that, that doesn't affect right. you when you're recording. So, mm -hmm. we, you know, we all just focus on... I think those guys pretty much just focus on, I'm speaking for myself on this, I just focus on getting the song there right. Right. You know? Yeah. And then all that other stuff will hash itself out, you know, as it goes. And and there's no point in life to worry about things that you can't control, you know? Yeah. Right. It just gets in the way, it creates minutia, and then it leads you to Schenectady, and you're, which is what I always called, I didn't know there was a town called Schenectady, but there, I always told <laughs> This phenomenon, disconnectedity, when you're trying to get from point A to point B, and then there's all these distractions that get in the way and lead you sideways or out of the way, and you wind up at Q instead of B, you know, mm. you're trying to get from point A yeah. to point B. Yeah. So, yeah, the minutia can get in the way if you let it, but you don't yeah. want it to. So all that other stuff, that's yeah. just the modern world. That's the way it is, and you can only control yeah. what you control. control. So yeah, it's just the way to be. And now I saw some, uh, you know, some reviews of the of the record, and one of them was the Boston Globe said, you know, the Grimes, your the new record shows the Grimes still holds up. And I'm curious whether you do you think of yourself as a grunge band? Is, is that Plus, I never did. Or the, never thought of that yeah. word grunge. That's just a marketing um, boy. That's like calling it. Oh, this is detergent. You know, grunge was a fucking yeah. word used in TV commercials about scum on your shower curtain. You know, that's. <laughs> it's yeah. just called rock and roll or it's called punk rock or right. you know whatever all those genres right. that everyone it's just like mm -hmm. it's, we never were grunge we were just a band right. from Seattle you know right yeah and I see people misreading quotes all the time about that too yeah well feel free to set the record you, you say, the game. band is their own band it doesn't matter where they're yeah. from or what scene they're from right. unless they're trying right. to right. emulate bands from their town you know whatever. Right, yeah. And Soundgarden didn't emulate anybody. I remember yeah. before I joined the band, they were their own thing. They were the first heavy band around, you know, playing the punk rock right, shows, yeah. opening for like mm. Purdue and Italian mm. Saints and stuff like that, you know. There was a weird crossover time period around then that people forget yeah. about too, where suddenly yeah, metalheads were listening to punk rock and going, wow, this isn't so docious as I thought uh, it was. This isn't as simple and stupid as I thought. It's hardcore. It's with right, guitars right. and badass drumming, you know? Yeah. And that was nationwide. That wasn't only in Seattle. That was crossover time, you know? And Soundgarden was one of the first bunch of, like, uh, the post-punk era to bother to get heavy and powerful and not just be a gratuitous butt rock band or bar band or something, you know, but actually writing right. original stuff and actually showing the mm -hmm. prowess of like, wow, you can play punk rock songs, but with prowess, like you're really good at what you do. Mm -hmm. you knew, I knew immediately the first time I ever saw them, wow, these guys are going to go somewhere. They're they're badass, man. They're different than everyone right. else, too. Where do you go from here? Is this going to kind of keep going for a while, or, or do you guys have any specific plans? Or Hell, man, I'm not sagacious enough to know that answer. <laughs> I can stop all my opinions all at once, you know. Please do. We'll see where it goes. We'll see where it goes. We're all in the same boat. We'll see what happens, right. you know. Uh -huh. I know that we want to keep making music, and that we've uh -huh. now that we've reestablished the foundation of the of the uh, craft to do it, you know. We can right. take our time and do it as we please or whatever. I mean, I think of songs every day that I'd like to like to hear Matt drum on and Chris sing on and. Chris play guitar on and Kim play guitar on and you know think of uh, weird stuff for Soundgarden all the time but hopefully you know, right. 
sooner than later we get to go and record some more. Right. Because I mean, all those guys are so creative. Everybody there, you know, all three of those guys, there's no stopping that juice. You know, just there's a technicality of reality in life that happens, so it's got to take it right. as it comes. But it sounds like in the right now, if you took a snapshot of the band, things are going good. good. Everyone's sort of relating to each other. It's going well. Yeah, we always did. Um, Even when we were broken up, we did. I, I think it would be cool if the fans picked the next single or whatever. If yeah. If they bothered to attack the, the machine. But that's so you're gonna do, with everybody else. Should people let you know let you know through the website if they want to help you pick the next single? Or? Wait a minute. What website? No, there's no website. Is there a website? There is. Yeah, there is one. Oh, wow. I don't even have a computer, so I don't know. <laughs> Trust me, this website. I just turned off my rototiller to do this too. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not gardening or anything. I was looking for my harmonica. It's out in the yard somewhere. <laughs> All right. Well, I think I can let you get back to that. Uh, looks like All right. We're out of time. So thanks so much. All right. Stop. Yeah. Stop being so damn serious, man. Have fun out there. All right. <laughs> All right. You take it easy. See you later. See you.